this video we're going to look at how dense blocks can be replaced on the inner leaf of a traditional cavity wall um, by a Manuk Air Creek block to give a much more uh, comfortable, higher performing and more sustainable home. Uh, so firstly we're going to look at heat loss from a typical house. So if we look at the diagram here on screen, um, you can lose up to 15% of your heat loss typically through your floor, 25% uh, uh, through your roof, uh, up to 25% through your windows and doors and up to 35% through your walls. So uh, in general you typically lose most of the heat from your home um, through your walls. Uh, so it's important in, and um, to note that and any improvement we can make in the thermal performance of the wall obviously because it's where most heat is lost it's going to make the big have the biggest impact um, and what's not shown in that diagram we'll discuss it in detail later is heat loss through thermal bridging and again up to another 35 percent of heat can be lost uh, through thermal bridging at the junctions of these elements and addressing the uh, or ma making these changes to the inner leaf of your cavity wall can also have a big uh, improvement there as well Just quickly looking at the uh, Monarch Air Creek blocks, what are they, how are they made? Um, Monarch Air Creek blocks are autoclaved aerated concrete blocks. They've got a unique microcellular structure uh, filled with millions of tiny pockets of air. Um, these air pockets are formed during the manufacturing process whereby a chemical reaction takes place between the aluminium and the lime in the mix and that chemical reaction gives off hydrogen gas which, which fills the, the mix then with these uh, pockets of air and those tiny pockets of air give the block its uh, light weight and its thermal uh, properties yet it doesn't impact on the strength of the block which we'll see uh, later on in, in another uh, diagram. So just uh, the benefits I suppose of, of air creek thermal blocks um, they achieve exceptional thermal performance uh, thanks to uh, their superb insulation properties. Um, using these blocks will help easily achieve NZEB and passive house standards. Um, the blocks is made from up to 80% recycled content which makes them a very sustainable product and sustainability is becoming more and more to the fore every day in all sorts of construction so uh, that's that's a, a key benefit of the blocks as well very sustainable and we'll cover that uh, in a little bit more detail later on um, in terms of uh, performance um, they are the best uh, performing block in Ireland in terms of thermal performance. There's other uh, thermal blocks available on the market but Manuk Air Creek blocks outperform those by quite a bit. Um, they're light, uh, easy to build, easy to cut and generally there's less waste on site when using Manuk Air Creek blocks. The range of blocks there as we can see we have uh, three uh, different block strengths. We have a 7.5 Newton block which is typically the same as a uh, dense concrete block, uh, typically dense concrete blocks are 7.5 Newton. so our uh, Manuk Air Crete 7 is the same strength as that. We then have a, a 5.2 Newton block which is called our Manuk Standard and we have a 2.9 Newton block which is our Manuk Super and uh, as you can see there the different block strengths have different thermal conductivities they are ranging from 0.19 watts per meter kelvin down to 0.12 watts per meter kelvin so the the 2.9 newton block is the best performance block and if we compare that to the thermal conductivity of a dense concrete block of 1.33 watts per meter uh, kelvin there's a huge difference in the thermal performance of the blocks in fact the, the 2.9 newton block is is uh, up to 10 times uh, more thermally efficient than a dense concrete block so they really do a good job in terms of thermal performance I um, mentioned thermal bridging, uh, thermal bridging uh, it's an area or component of an object which has a poorer thermal conductivity than the surrounding material. Um, it creates a path of least resistance 
for heat to flow through and the cores at junctions in the building fabric where two elements meet and as I said it can account for up to 35% of heat loss from a building so it's hugely significant and it, it should uh, always be addressed and the, the lower the U value or the better the U value of the elements within the house so people's uh, obviously insulating the floors and walls and roofs really well spend a lot of money to insulate those well to improve the thermal performance of the home but that in fact makes the thermal bridge more significant because that uh, path of uh, least resistance gets gets greater there between the elements so the better we insulate our homes the more important thermal bridging becomes uh, so just looking at uh, a couple of typical thermal bridges that we come across on a daily basis. Probably the most common one and the one that people um, address most is shown here where we have uh, a floor to wall junction. Uh, as you can see there, the floor insulation and the wall insulation typically don't meet. They're broken by uh, the inner leaf of the cavity wall which uh, is a structural um, traditional dense concrete block which bridges the two um, and that is where the thermal bridge is. It's a break or gap in the insulation envelope of the building and uh, what manic concrete blocks do as you can see in this diagram uh, simply by replacing the two dense blocks with two manic concrete blocks we essentially plug that gap between the insulation and form continuity of insulation across that junction. And in fact, uh, replacing those two dense blocks with two manic concrete blocks increases or reduces the heat loss through that junction by up to 10 times. So a small change there makes a huge, huge difference. Another typical uh, junction there shown on screen, we have our uh, attic insulation uh, within our ceiling joist and above our ceiling joist. So we have a cold attic above, we have our heated bedroom uh, or habitable room below and again the attic insulation doesn't actually uh, touch or meet the cavity wall insulation. So you have a significant thermal bridge between the two and again simply replacing two dense blocks with two uh, manic concrete blocks plugs that gap and improves the performance of that junction. Another common detail here in Ireland is where we have a roof abutment, maybe a sunroom sitting off to the side of the main uh, part of the house. Um, so above the sunroom roof there you, could, you have the external environment, you could have temperatures maybe minus uh, temperatures. Uh, in the middle of winter and then you have your sunroom maybe heated to 19, 20 degrees and again there's a clear heat path between your, the roof insulation of your sunroom and the insulation in the cavity wall. So you have an awful lot of heat there going from your heated room inside to maybe minus temperatures outside and very simply again sim uh, replacing two dense blocks. Uh, with two manic concrete blocks just below your, your, your lead flashings there um, overcomes that problem. So there are probably, uh, I'd say the floor to wall junction is the most common one that people address. Um, some people may look at these others but uh, they should be looking at them but uh, in a lot of cases they're more or less ignored. Those are three typical junctions but if we look at uh, in any house there's five, six, seven junctions where we should be introducing manic concrete blocks to overcome thermal bridging. And this diagram here shows all the locations where we have a thermal bridge in a typical house. So uh, to fully address thermal bridging and uh, to get the best um, out of in terms of thermal performance through our thermal bridges, there should be manic concrete blocks placed at all the locations shown there by the purple line in the diagram and uh, by doing that you're going to have a I suppose sort of a patchwork effect whereby you have dense blocks here manic concrete blocks there and uh, so leading on from that what we uh, would suggest to elevate this to the next level and overcome potential problems is to build the entire inner leaf of the cavity wall with manic concrete blocks And that has a number of key benefits. Um, all thermal bridges is taken care of by default 
almost. So if we're looking at them five, six, seven junctions, uh, we're talking about losing a lot of heat through. If we build the entire inner leaf of the cavity wall of Managara Creek blocks, then all those thermal bridges are addressed without even thinking about it. Um, so you're not wondering, is, is this one dealt with, is that one dealt with, they're just basically taken care of. So that will reduce the heat loss through thermal bridging by up to 80% uh, if we, if we um, address all those thermal bridges. As well as improving the uh, thermal bridge by introducing a more thermally efficient block to the inner leaf. Uh, if we've discussed that it's up to 10 times more thermally efficient than the dense concrete block. You're also improving the uh, U-value of the wall. You're, you're lowering the U-value, so as well as retaining heat at your junctions, you're gonna retain more heat through uh, your wall as well. So uh, again, that's another huge benefit. If we want then, because we're saving on energy through our uh, junctions and we have a better U value in a wall because of the introduction of the aircrete block, you could in fact maybe uh, save some money by taking some insulation out of the home elsewhere or maybe on pulling back a wee bit on expensive renewable technologies. So if you want to offset the additional or slight additional cost of the aircrete blocks, you can, you can make those savings easily by looking at the other elements of the house where you can make some savings because of the introduction of the blocks. But we find in most cases people are happy to leave the rest as is and just introduce the blocks as an improvement. No mix mixing and matching of blocks. As I said, if you address the thermal bridges just by putting the uh, aircrete blocks in at the junctions, good job, um, solves your thermal bridging issues. But as I say, we have this patchwork effect of uh, aircrete versus dense blocks. Um, your block layer probably won't thank you for, for that, or your plasterer won't thank you for that. Uh, there's mixing and matching of blocks. There's potential differential movement. Uh, between the aircrete block and the dense block which uh, can be overcome by using expanded metal across that junction but by using uh, the manic aircrete block and the tyre inner leaf we're overcoming all those problems so no issues with your builder or your plaster. Faster thermal response when compared to dense blocks um, because they're more insulating product uh, your room will basically heat up quicker if you come into your home and it's cold and you put on your heating the block won't absorb much heat, as much heat as a dense block, so it'll, it'll uh, heat up quicker and we'll, we'll look at that maybe a little bit later on. And optimal thermal mass. Um, uh, dense blocks have a higher thermal mass because they're more dense than an aircrete block, uh, but an aircrete block has uh, six times better thermal mass than the lightweight forms of construction, for example, uh, timber frame or light steel frame construction. So while still maintaining that faster thermal response, you're still getting that good thermal mass as well. So we would uh, say that Manic Aircrete Blocks has got an optimal thermal mass. Um, and just in, in terms of uh, thermal bridging, uh, and uh, obviously by introducing the Manic Aircrete Blocks in the tire inner leaf, you're overcoming your thermal bridges and you're reducing heat loss and saving money, which is very important. The other element of it is you're, you're re eliminating any risk of uh, surface condensation and mold growth. The introduction of the aircrete blocks will increase the surface temperature at the junction and uh, it will eliminate any risk of water droplets condensing on the cold surface of the wall and forming uh, mildew, which, which is uh, very unsightly, but more importantly, very uh, unhealthy. So you're gonna have a, a healthier, more comfortable home. Uh, thermal mass, we've, we've briefly discussed that. What thermal mass does, I suppose, if you have um, heat energy coming from the sun, typically through south facing windows, uh, if you don't have any thermal mass in your house, your temperature in your room is going to uh, go up very high, maybe uncomfortably high. What thermal mass does is that energy is absorbed into the, the dense or the, the, the mass of the house, uh, your floors and your walls, and uh, that helps regulate the temperature. So your temperature in your, in your 
home during the day doesn't go up as high and then at night when temperature starts to drop uh, and, and the room starts to become colder that energy the heat that's stored within your thermal mass is released back into the room which keeps your room warmer for longer so i suppose thermal mass helps regulate uh, the temperature and sort of uh, reduces the peaks and the thrusts in that, in that temperature diagram there that, that we can see on screen. So again, we would say that, that um, monarch aircrete blocks have an optimal thermal mass and a uh, huge, huge benefit for aircrete blocks over and above uh, light frame uh, or light weight forms of construction, for example, timber frame and light steel frame. And again, thermal uh, response. That little diagram just was uh, showing a study that was done many years ago. Um, a room heating up from zero temperature, um, looking at lightweight construction and, and uh, heavy concrete blocks. And as you can see, the um, the room which has uh, the lightweight form of construction, manic aircrete blocks, heats up significantly quicker than the dense block because it's not absorbing um, as much heat during the heating up process. So uh, a good benefit there. Now we touched on sustainability. Um, aircrete blocks are a very sustainable product. They're made from uh, up to 80% recycled content, which obviously is very good from a sustainable point of view and reduces the carbon content of the product. Um, but as well as reducing the carbon content of the product itself, um, the building into which they're used is going to be uh, more thermally efficient and therefore there's going to be um, lower CO2 emissions and less energy used by that particular building, which again helps with sustainability. Um, Manuk Aircrete uh, blocks, we have third party certified uh, EPDs in those products. Aircrete uh, it generally um, is, has got an A plus green guide rating which demonstrates that it is a sustainable product and um, all the ingredients or the main ingredients for our Manuk Aircrete blocks are uh, sourced locally uh, to a production facility with the exception maybe of aluminium and lime which come from a bit further afield for a small part of the mix but the main uh, constituents of the mix come are sourced locally and uh, which, which, which helps with reduce transport costs and make the product more sustainable. In addition to that because the product is a lot lighter uh, transporting the product from our uh, production facility to uh, the site again that's going to reduce because the light weight of the product is going to reduce carbon emissions there. So that's really it um, folks if you have uh, any queries on anything that uh, we've seen in the video today or anything else that I haven't covered uh, please feel free to uh, contact us the, the details are shown there on the screen. Thank you.